to uh, give a warm welcome to our speaker today. And uh, I just love her. So would you please welcome Miss Tony Hamilton. Good morning, family. So good to see you, so good to be here. And thank you for those of you who haven't been here for a while and came out. So, our theme is living as wholeness. And our topic is recognizing wholeness, seeing the good in all. So today, my talk is going to get a little bit personal. I honestly don't like to be too personal, but I think it's important to give you examples and to be able to share with you what it is that I want to share with you and how it has unfolded in my life this year. So, this past week, I had the gift of being invited to something called a goddess gathering. Had not been to one before, didn't know what to expect. It um, had people from the center, people, women from the center, women who were not from the center, women from all different walks of life with all different kinds of skills and talents. I gotta tell you, I had a blast. I had such a wonderful time. Now you know what we were doing. We were sitting and yapping about everything under the sun. You name it, we talked about it because what? That's what we do, right? That's what we do. But here is what touched me. Here's what was wonderful, okay? There were women there that were so different than me, at least on the surface. So I'll use an example. I'm going to like not let you know who was really there, but I'll use an example. So for example, there was a woman there. She's not here today. There was a woman there who is more of a, a scientist type, right? And I'm more of an artsy, craftsy type, you know? But as I was sitting there looking at her and listening to her speak, my heart was so open because my mind just flashed back to moments like when my sister passed and, and the people that were there and assisted with my, my sister's service and the people who gave me encouragement and helped me walk through some of what I walked through and she was one of them. You know, and though we're really, really very different, I recognize that there was something at the core. There was something that allowed me to just really feel love for her. And I was so experiencing admiration for so many of the women that were there. And the things that we were talking about and what we were sharing, and trust me, we did not agree. We did not agree on everything, but it was a safe space to share, to listen, to be open, to talk and laugh and be silly and have a lot of fun. And for me, it was a gift. And as I go through my talk, you'll understand um, a little bit more about why. I also want to share with you that you, you heard me talk about taking classes a lot this year. This year was a study year for me, okay? I did a lot of classes and a lot of inner work. And bless you, you always hear me say, take class, take class. Now, I honestly don't say that because I, I want to fill up the classes and, and want the center to make money. 
I say that because that's where the transformation happens. That's where you learn to embody this teaching. And that is what is required to live the lives that we want to live. Embodying the teaching or some teaching of truth, okay? Something <laughs> that, that is really the truth that you can change your life and build a life upon, a life that you want to live. And so I took, I think, actually, I, I know I took a couple of classes before this, but what comes to mind is the forgiveness class. Now, I've been studying with Reverend Michelle for a long time, over 20 years. Her forgiveness class has got to be, at this point, her best class. And I went into that class disconnected from the idea that I could really forgive myself. Now let me, let me make it clear. I went into the class with the intention of hopefully being able to forgive myself. Wasn't even sure exactly what I was gonna forgive myself for, but some of the mistakes I had made in my life, you know, um, but I, I didn't go into that class believing that that's what was going to happen, right? And I came out of the class, it was a nice class. She's got a, a treatment that she wrote that has got to be one of the most powerful treatments that I've ever read, okay? And she, she gives it to you at the end of the class. But So the class was good. It was okay, but I didn't have any major thing happening or so I thought, okay? And then Reverend Joel started doing uh, the Julia Cameron classes. So he did about three of them. And you've probably heard me say before that every time I re read a Julia Cameron book or take a Julia Cameron class, something major happens for me. There's some kind of major shift, okay? And so I just finished um, the artist way with Reverend Joel, right? And the first time I took it was here um, at the center. I had read the book before, um, and the book had changed my life um, before, but the first time I took a class was with um, Alan and Reverend Cheryl here at the center way back. I think it was like in 2007 or something, I'm not sure. And what happened as a result of me taking that class is that I remembered that I had a long forgotten dream. There was buried, okay? I, I, I want you guys to connect the dots as I'm talking, okay? So this long forgotten dream was I wanted to be able to draw, all right? Don't know where that came from or why, but I wanted to be able to draw. And I literally forgot about it. And Alan pressed me, he said, go look up, there's this woman who uh, wrote this book, Drawing from the Right Side of the Brain. Go look it up, they have classes, see if you can take a class. So I did, I found one and it was way too expensive for me, okay? So I went back and he asked me in the next class and I said, yeah, I found one that's too expensive. So he said, okay, go online, get the book, there's a video. You know, and I went online and I got the book. And as I was looking online, there was a class at the Open Center by one of her students. I literally took a week off from work and I, nine to five, went to the Open Center and I drew. And to my amazement, I drew, okay? Now here's the thing, after that class, I didn't draw again for a few years, and I didn't know why. I didn't understand why. Then just so happens that we have in our center a resident brilliant artist. And I kept nudging every once in a while. I finally got up the courage to ask him to teach a class. And the truth is, the first couple of times I asked, I mentioned it, he really wasn't feeling it. He really wasn't paying any attention to me. And somehow, he kind of like caught the idea and said, 
Other people have asked me too. I'd like to do that. That might be fun. Okay? So finally, what he did was he told a painting class. Not what I asked for. I asked for a drawing class. But I took the painting class, okay, because I'm obedient. I saw it as an opening, okay? I did okay in the painting class. At the end of the painting class, based on some trouble I was having, I do believe, he said to me, uh, Tony, um, I think maybe you need to, to draw right now. You need to do a drawing class. The next class I'm going to do is a drawing class. And I was like, hallelujah, thank God. Okay? And so the next class was a drawing class. And I struggled. I had this thing going on. And I couldn't figure it out. It was the reason that I hadn't been drawing. I learned later was a block. So the whole point of the Artist Way class is to unblock. Julia Cameron wrote this book to assist artists, to assist actors who were blocked with unblocking. And it is powerful. Now remember I said I've done it several times, okay? So Bill used to say to me, it's what you're thinking. What are you thinking? Oh, I'm sorry, I just said his name, didn't I? Well, we all knew I was talking about Bill Sarnowski, right? Anyway, so. So, I'm like, I'm not thinking anything. I'm feeling, and it feels uncomfortable. I, I don't have any thoughts. And he's like, well, there's got to be some thoughts in there, you know? I'm like, look, in this teaching, all my life in this teaching, they said thoughts come first and then feelings. I'm like, mm, no, that's your folks, because I feel, okay? And I'm not in touch with any thoughts. I just feel, okay? So all right, we can be different, it's okay. So we're going along and, and uh, I do the class and, and everything and, and I made progress, you know? And um, afterwards, I went um, and I, I studied with Bill. And then, you know, I do contract work. And we've had all this stuff going on and everything. And, and I wasn't getting a lot of work. And I really didn't, you know, have the, the cash. And I'm being totally transparent here. And so Bill said to me, oh, no worry. I, I, I'll teach you. I'll work with you. I didn't do it. I couldn't receive it. So fast forward, I took, it's never too late, right for life. I took right for life and I wrote the first draft of two books that I had been wanting to write for like 10, 15 years, okay? Then I, um, took, um, a, I did a book study with Reverend Neil Busting Loose from The Money Game, okay? No disrespect to the authors that wrote it. I walked out of that class confused and frustrated. It wasn't a class, it was a book study. I was so frustrated because I've been in this teaching for years and I'm like, I'm struggling with money too much. I have to get this together. I have to heal whatever it is in my consciousness that is causing me to have this issue. So I jumped into this book study and walked out of there frustrated. And Reverend Neil and Barry said, look out for when Patrick Harbula does a class because he's the bust and loose guru, okay? Fast forward, I don't know, a month or two goes by, and I, I'm, I'm on a Zoom, right? <laughs> I'm on a Zoom, and I get this text from somebody in our center that said, Patrick Habula is doing the Busting Loose class. You have to come in now if you want to join this class. <laughs> I said, oh my goodness, please excuse me. I have an emergency. I have something going on. I have to get off the Zoom. I got off the Zoom. I clicked the link and I joined the class, okay? 
Now, look, I had already said I wasn't going to take another class. I was taking so many classes. Sometimes I was taking three, four classes at once, okay? But my spirit reacted, and I had to take this class. And I, I took this class. Now, I got to tell you, what Patrick Harbula did was he translated what was in the book, okay? And you know what? It's really the teaching. But... I don't know if this guy, if this was just his experience and he just came from another place, or if he was, if he was in the teaching and trying to write a book without it being the teaching. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not sure what he did, but let me not misrepresent it. It's a powerful, powerful book. And what Patrick Harbula did was translate the teaching and then develop tools that made sense to utilize it. Develop the spiritual practices that made sense. So what did he do? He did a bust and loose meditation. Okay? Beautiful. But now I'm clear. Now I'm clear. And then I started seeing some shifts in my life. Little things like um, I went um, I went to visit family over the the holidays um, in Maryland, and there were a group of us. We were supposed to stay in the hotel, and the people I was supposed to stay with backed out. So now I'm faced with I got to pay for a hotel. And anyway, my niece said, "No, stay with me." So then. I went for an artist date, which is something you do when you take the artist way class, and I want to photograph the um, jellyfish at the Baltimore Aquarium. It was something I had been wanting to do for years, for years, and I finally did it. And long story short, there was a woman there that said, um, I'm, I'm buying a membership. You can come in as my guest. Save me 50 bucks. Okay, little things like that start happening. Now, I'm sharing these things with you for a reason because I want you to see that the teaching works, that the growth and the inner work that I experienced in these classes all come together and have been shifting and changing my life. Now, back to drawing. So... In the artist way class, you are given um, exercises to do, inner work to do, um, little projects that you have to do. And in doing that inner work for one of the chapters, what I discovered was that feeling that I was feeling when I was trying to draw that caused me to procrastinate, that stopped me from being able to do it on my own without the loving support of someone who had been through it and, and believed in me enough to support me no matter what. What I saw was that it was fear, it was doubt, it was the discomfort and the unconscious thought that somehow I couldn't do it. Somehow I wasn't enough. And what I was experiencing was the feeling of that. I wish I could put those feelings into words. The, the, the tightness, the sadness, the... the I'm so sorry. It's so hard for me to put into words how uncomfortable and how awful it felt. And there was no wonder that I didn't want to draw because I was facing those feelings every time I picked up a pencil to draw. And I had so much trouble getting past it. Don't know exactly how Bill got me past it. He just like gave me stuff to do, you know, and said, try this. You know, and I'm sharing these very specifically for a reason because all 
of the classes that I took, all the spiritual practices, all the inner work, the things that I was able to look at and use spiritual practices to try and unfold and to move past, um, all the things that allowed me to face myself and what was in the way. You know, in, in this teaching, we're taught that spirit is within us. The spirit always says yes, and any and everything good is possible, but getting to it, being able to get out of our own way and see the truth of it and embody it is a whole nother thing. And so the classes assisted me with doing that. So what started happening was I thought, oh, the forgiveness class, oh, it was nice, but loved the treatment, but it didn't do that much. But then I started practicing being kinder to myself. I started catching the thoughts that I had, that I wasn't enough, that I wasn't okay. Really, they were more feelings, like a foreboding feeling more than a thought. It was later, okay? Now you may say to yourself, hey, Tony, really? This is so, like Tony's successful, you know? I, I look at her and I think she's doing pretty good, you know? So I had all this stuff going on. Despite how successful I am being, you know? And so what what started to unfold is I started being kinder to myself. In, in the artist way class, you have to do something called an artist date. The artist date you do by yourself. And the whole point of it is that you go and do something that you might enjoy, explore something you want to explore, to nourish, to refuel you, to fill you up. That's an act of self-love. That's an act of kindness towards yourself. And then somehow I decided that I wanted to start having more fun. Now, I, I want to make this really, really clear, and I'm going to close because I, I think it's really important. We live in a society that does not support us having too much fun. Am I wrong? If you're having too much fun, there's something going on, something wrong. You're, you, you know, you're wild, you're, you're running from something, you're irresponsible. We live in a society where it, this, you're supposed to work, you have duties, you have to be responsible, you're supposed to be self-sacrificing, okay? I will get extra points for self-sacrifice when I cross over, trust me, okay? But what points are really given for is self-love. If points are given at all, you get you, you understand what I'm saying. And so what gradually started happening was I started being invited to things like the goddess gathering that I was invited to. What started happening was I went from singing in another center or speaking in another center from every now and again to every week now I am. And, and it's gotten to the point where I miss my center. Okay, because I'm at another center singing or speaking and I'm so grateful. And so I, I fear I'm talking too long, so let me wrap this up. I want to tell you and share with you what I learned that I think is the most important and most powerful thing. And I want to invite you to join me in doing it. And that is this to allow yourself to have fun, to do the things that make a difference to you, that warm your heart, that fill you up, that empower you, to do the things that will allow you to experience joy, 
and love and beauty and wholeness and let those things be the most important thing in your life. I'm going to include that you want to be kind to other people. We all have family members and friends that we have challenging relationships with. Just be as kind as you can. You know, I have family members that make fun of me because I give too much. You know, they say I'm soft and mushy. I even have one family member who calculates and knows that she can get me to do so and so and so and so. As if I'm stupid and don't understand what's going on, I do. But I'm going to love you and I'm going to give to you anyway. And I'm going to keep loving you until you are able to stop the nonsense and love yourself. Am I going to let you abuse me? No, I'm not. Honestly, there was a time where I may have let you abuse me, but not now. Because I've grown. Okay? And so what I recognize and what I understand now is the power and presence that is within us. That is the love. That is the light. We have to embody it. We have to allow it to express through us and experience it as our personal experience. That is embodying the teaching that is allowing the truth that God expresses uniquely and individually through each one of us that allows it through. So yes, what? I am telling you, have a great time. Have a blast. Be in love. Be in joy. My Thanksgiving celebration with my family in Maryland was wonderful. I am not into Thanksgiving. I'm into family. It was wonderful. I was immersed in love. I was immersed in love. And so what I am recommending, what I am suggesting is that that becomes our spiritual practice, to enjoy yourself and have fun, not at the risk, of course, of being irresponsible, okay, but to really make that a part of life and our goal. And then enter the law of attraction. Because when we are having fun, enjoying ourselves, expressing love and receiving love and living in love, it raises our vibration. And what do you think happens? We attract more of it. We absolutely attract more of it, okay? I've been in this teaching since like the, the late 70s. <laughs> it, it took me all this time. But thank goodness, I'm getting there. I'm getting it. And so, you're gonna see me probably act a little different. I've been having fun. And I'm going to continue to have fun, okay? And do my best to live from this place because I wrote something I wanna read, where is it? You know, I write all this stuff and then I just get up here and talk. Love, fun, joy is in fact what will shift and change our lives and help us to embody the principles of this teaching to actually experience and develop a relationship with the presence. Allow us to create, I should say co-create, and change our lives, our environment, impact the lives of those around us, and in so doing, have it radiate out and exponentially change the world. That's how we change the world. I'm not ignoring the things that are going on. I'm suggesting that we contribute to it by being in love, by being in joy, by having fun, and by being peace. So let's take this into treatment.
So I'm just going to ask, Spirit, that you speak through me. And so what I know is that there is a divine power and presence. It is everywhere. Everywhere. It is within the beat of our hearts. It is within the breath that we breathe. It is within the ground that we stand upon. It is within the thoughts that we think. It is everywhere evenly present. And I dare say that what it is first and foremost is love. It is love. It is joy. It is beauty. It is harmony. It is wholeness. Wholeness meaning there is no lack or limitation of any kind. There is absolutely nothing missing. And this is available to each one of us. This expresses in and through and as each one of us. And what I affirm and declare with this word is that each one of us now becomes clearer. Each one of us now allows this presence to express through us in ways that create more joy, more fulfillment, more self-love, more self-empowerment, more creative expression, more of God expressing uniquely by means of each one of us. I affirm with this word that there is a greater clarity than there has ever been before, and it expands exponentially in the right way and the right time for each one of us. I declare and affirm with this word that each one of us embraces love, that each one of us opens our heart, and no matter what fear we may experience, we open our hearts and invite this presence in. Invite love in and invite love to express more fully, more deeply, more profoundly by means of ourselves. Little old me, little old you, embodying the power and presence of God uniquely, individually, but fully and completely. I affirm this for each one of us, for anyone who is looking for and longing for more fulfillment, more love, more peace, more truth. And I dare affirm this, no matter what is going on, I affirm this for the world. I affirm love, I affirm peace, I affirm joy. For this I am so, so grateful. I am so grateful for this center. I am so grateful for the growth, the blessings, the love that I have received. And I just simply release this word into the law, knowing that it is ever unfolding and expanding because God simply creates moment by moment, day in and day out, God creates in and through and as you and me and all of life, God creates. I accept it, I allow it, I receive it. Please close with me. And so it is.